Hi everybody and welcome to the second part of uh, abusing external resource references in Microsoft Office documents. Uh, in this second part uh, we will be focusing on uh, audio object embedding and it's basically about you can easily embed a link to another object, in this case audio object. And in this example, in this exercise, I will be uh, injecting the RTF document as an only object. Uh, and this RTF document will be exploiting a CV 2017-11882. Uh, this RTF document will be served as JPEG file, uh, but the most important is that our HTTP uh, ethical server will send, a, send it as content type application MS Word, which basically served for uh, that Microsoft Office will recognize that this JPEG file is uh, in real uh, application MS Word, uh, in this case RTF document, and it will successfully open it and uh, it will trigger the exploit. So uh, later I will show you how you can analyze this, how you can uh, uh, deal with some uh, evasion techniques and uh, something like that. So let's jump to our VM. Uh, I don't want to repeat myself uh, uh, and want to don't want to repeat what I already covered in first part. So if you didn't check the first part, let's check it and uh, come back here. Uh, again, I will be using my HTTP server. You can see the implementation here for a quick view. Uh, you can see that I'm serving two files. One is the real payload and the second file is a decoy file, which is basically a real JPEG. Uh, I have definition for two uh, uh, response uh, to two methods. Uh, my HTTP server supports uh, request options and request get. And basically, uh, in options, uh, I will respond to with supported request uh, of HTTP protocol, which is get and uh, options. And uh, uh, to respond to get a request, uh, I will serve. Uh, in one case, the decoy file, and in real case, the real payload, uh, which is the, uh, which will be here, the malicious RTF document, uh, which will be served as a JPEG file. And here is, you can see that here is a check of user agent as an evasion technique. Uh, server is listening on port 80 and on my IP address, and it's all. So you can see here, here is already prepared the RTF document exploiting CVE 2017-11882. Uh, and if you check it in hex editor, you can see that it's really, uh, it's not a JPEG, it's an RTF document. Yeah, RTF document. And somewhere here is the exploit. I will show you later how you can analyze this task. Uh, I also modified the host file to successfully resolve bitcoin.com domain to my IP address of the VM. I already mentioned it in first part. So uh, now let's create some uh, document which will be uh, performing the OLI object uh, external resource references injecting. So go to uh, Microsoft Office Word. And how you can perform this uh, kind of attack, basically you can create a blank document and now go to insert, insert, uh, object, and object. And you have here many options. You can create new, for example, you can uh, embed for uh, Excel uh, document, some, some table, and uh, it's quite a common used. But you can also create from file and you can for example you have uh, already created some excel uh, table uh, excel sheet so you can embed it uh, you want to embed it to the this document you can browse and embed it but you can also link to file and the funny thing is that you can uh, link you can browse but you can also uh, specify here the link address which could be for, for example in this case a uh, link to some uh, http web server to some file that's quite uh, not commonly used and i didn't show it uh, in uh, real world so it's quite uh, interesting and uh, many open source tools are not detecting this met method, so this technique. So I hope you will quite enjoy it.
So let's say HTTP. Mm, Bitcoin.com. Bitcoin JPEG. Okay. Bitcoin.com. Bitcoin JPEG. Uh, before that, uh, let's let's uh, start our uh, HTTP server because the Microsoft Office uh, will be checking if this file uh, exists. So open command prompt and let's run our HTTP server. Python to HTTP. Let's run it. And you can see that it will be serving the Bitcoin JPEG. Yep, but in this location, and I can see that I have different location here. So go back, copy this, close this, go to uh, desktop, okay, Windows Explorer this stop copy it here and from this location run the http server because uh, again check that i specified here the location uh, which will be on the desktop uh, open command prompt uh, python to http and it's correct. Now we can come back to Microsoft Word and click OK. And it's done. And you can see that it was already exploited, but it doesn't matter. Yeah, because basically what you uh, did now, uh, you didn't something like that you in, uh, embedded the audio object to this document. You embedded only the link to this object. So now you can save it. But this, look, this looks quite suspicious. So you can, for example, insert uh, a picture here. In this case, you can insert here something which is related to Bitcoin. So let's go to downloads. I already prepared here some nice picture. Yeah, and change the format, rep text, and uh, go like um, in front of text. Now you can see, you can't see anything else than JPEG. Okay, let's save it. Uh, save as uh, download and you can save it as docx you can rename it as for example bitcoin wallet let's say it's quite uh, nice for the week team and close it and you have here this could be deleted now and you have here this document which basically uh, implemented uh, all the object embedded via uh, external resource reference. Uh, if you want to investigate it with some open source tool, you could be quite disappointed because uh, uh, this method is not quite uh, good uh, detected. You can see, for example, my uh, favorite tool is uh, Oli Tools, uh, Python Oli Tools. Uh, in this case, Oli VBA. Oli VBA and Bitcoin Wallet. And you can see here that uh, type open XML, no VBA macros found. But as you saw already in the first part, the template injection, which basically uh, uh, performed uh, another method of uh, external resource uh, reference, um, was successfully detected, but in this case, not because uh, the external resource or the uh, object were, is defined in an absolutely different file than a template injection, template refer external reference. And I will show you later. Now uh, you can run Wireshark to check also the network.
then I want to also show you again, as I already mentioned in the first part, that uh, my HTTP server is the, simply some uh, implementation of FedTechRock server, some command and control, and it has some evasion technique. I already mentioned that it's checking the user agent, and if it doesn't look like like uh, Microsoft Office user agent, it will serve the decoy file. You will see it later. I already uh, mentioned it in the first part, I, but I think that it's quite important here. Now go to download and uh, let's attach it to loopback and uh, run the Bitcoin wallet dot x. You can see something like starting, contacting server, processing, opening, and what do you have? Calculator. No macro and exploit. Okay, so how you can analyze this kind of document? There is uh, many methods, but uh, I want to show you only some of them. Uh, first of all, uh, you can again I use the seven zip because it's uh, it's a compressed file docx, and uh, the open XML format is uh, compressed and it's uh, packed in docx format. You can open it with 7-zip easily. So let's open the archive. And the external resource uh, um, specifying that uh, some OLI object uh, was uh, embedded to this file is defined in this folder word, rails, and document XML rails. Let's edit it. And check it here. You can see it somewhere <clears throat> here. Definition that only object is embedded and target is uh, this URL HTTP Bitcoin.com Bitcoin JPEG and target mode external. It's quite uh, similar to template injection technique, but this is uh, less detected. It's not uh, commonly used. I don't know uh, if uh, everybody knows about this technique, but it's quite interesting. So first method, how you can uh, download the real malicious payload and uh, continue analyzing as an analyst or malware analyst uh, with this kind of uh, technique. So copy this uh, URL. Okay, and now you can use something, for example, like PowerShell or Cura or uh, wget uh, and try to download the malicious payload. In this case, uh, the uh, RTF exploiting vulnerability. So invoke that request uh, URL will be this one and Code file will be Bitcoin JPEG. Let's run it and check what you got here. Uh, okay, but if you double click on it, yeah, it's a real JPEG, so the decoy file. And as I already mentioned in the first uh, part, as you saw, this. Uh, um, my implementation of uh, HTTP server is checking the user agent. So try to look as much possible as Microsoft Office user agent. You can see it in Varshark. So let's stop it. Uh, go to HTTP uh, method HTTP request method and for example, this one, uh, yep, follow TCP stream, and you can see here is a user agent of Microsoft Office, and here is the response, and you can see that it's RTF document, not some decoy file. So you can copy this uh, user agent, and we, we will try to look as much possible as much similar as uh, Microsoft Office user agent in PowerShell. 
come back to PowerShell again, I'll specify use agent. Okay, I delete it. So let's say we can do something like MS Office. MS Office XX. Uh, try it. And if you check it, now it's a different file. What it is, it's not the JPEG, it's the malicious payload. It's the malicious RTF document. Yep. And now we can, um, let's say, I will a step further and I will show you how we can analyze this kind of uh, uh, exploit. One of the simply way. Let's copy it. And first of all, uh, it's an RTF document. So let's use something, uh, you can rename it, but it doesn't matter. F. Yes, copy that, and we will be using uh, Didier Stevens' uh, suits. Suit because it's really, really, um, there are too many good uh, tools for document analysis and other stuff. So I really recommend this stuff. Uh, now you can uh, delete it or close this. Uh, HTTP server because we don't need it anymore. Copy that to the dear Steven suit, the Bitcoin uh, JPEG RTF, the malicious payload. And uh, now let's say run command prompt here. And first of all, we will be using RTF dump, which is a very good uh, tool for analyzing RTF documents. So it's, I think that it's in Python 2, so let's say Python 2, uh, RTF, dump Python, and the uh, file is Bitcoin JPEG RTF. What you can see here, you can see some uh, streams, and you can see 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, but 7 is quite suspicious because it contains object data, and you can see that object class is equitation, and uh, many of you already know that equitation has a vulnerability or had vulnerability and it's the CV I already mentioned. And so it's uh, here is the seven. So let's select uh, stream seven. So seven. Okay, what we got here? Oh, it's uh, too big, so go to properties, uh, layout, uh, window size, uh, window screen buffer, height will be 3000, height will be 3000, it's enough, okay, clear window, and again, okay, I interrupt it, and what we got here, check it. The stream seven, which uh, contains object data, has some uh, interesting uh, con uh, content, but it's uh, in ASCII and it's a dead, it's a hexadecimal character in ASCII. So you can switch to view this uh, hexadecimal ASCII as hex, and you can do it with uh, RTF dump with one uh, argument like this. H. And it's better. You can see already uh, Windows syslative calc exe, which is the command which will be invoked. And this is basically the object data. So you can dump this into our file. Because as you can see, this is there is something interesting here, and it's this signature. D O C F one one E O A R A one. It's basically only object, a magic signature. So we can do something like this. Uh, and let's dump it. You file uh, X 
x x one dot bin. Okay. And now uh, you want to analyze this uh, xxx one dot bin because uh, in this file uh, it's uh, there is embedded uh, all the object and for the all the uh, all the um, file analysis is a very good all the dump tool from the dear Steven suit so you can use all the dump on the xxx one but what you can see it will print you that error. It's not. It, it's not a valid only file because it was. If you remember, the magic signature was somewhere uh, in, uh, not in the beginning of this file. But only dump has some nice feature here. You can see it here. You can specify an argument f, and it will find uh, the ocf 11 eo magic sequence in this file and it will print uh, the location or offset uh, where this uh, magic signature is uh, in this file so it's really nice already done uh, let's say f option arrow and uh, the file and you will see that it's on uh, location offset uh, 23 in hexadecimal and now you can cut this uh, 30, uh, 23 uh, bytes in hexadecimal uh, with uh, another tool, uh, and it, uh, it's called cut bytes. And cut bytes, and you can specify uh, the offset, which is uh, OX23, and to the end. And let's uh, dump it in file, which is in this case xxx1. And the result goes to xxx2.bin. Okay, now you try again, only dump, but on the xxx2 because we already cut the first 20 per byte, uh, 23 bytes in hexadecimal from xxx1 and save it as xxx2 bin. So let's say xxx2 and uh, what you can see here, yeah, it's valid only object, only file. Uh, the, here is the suspicious one, equitation native. So let's uh, select uh, select four. And you can see it here. Here is the command. And this is the shellcode. But where is the beginning of the shellcode? This is not the beginning of the shellcode. I can recognize it already. But how you can successfully find the uh, shellcode beginning? So let's save it. Save it as uh, so. Let's dump it and uh, save it to uh, xxx three sc. Okay, we don't need it anymore here. And we have here uh, the xxx3sc somewhere here. Here you can check it in a uh, hex editor that we uh, really saved what we wanted. Yep, that's it. And basically, you can delete these zeros for nothing. Okay. And there are many methods how you can uh, successfully find the shellcode uh, beginning. First of all, it's uh, quite uh, uh, difficult because you have to know uh, the assembly instruction. You have to be quite familiar with assembly. But you can use uh, CyberShell for this uh, purpose. I will show you how you can do that.
but you can successfully find the shell code beginning. Uh, the possibility that you successfully find the beginning is uh, as high as your knowledge about assembly language. Uh, and I will show you. So, uh, go to the DDR Steven suit. Uh, XFS free SC and to drop it to the cyber shed and now convert to hex. To hex and uh, replace input with output. Okay, and now we will be using the disassembly. Disassemble x86, x86 at 85 because uh, equitation was a uh, 32 bit application, so the exploit wall was probably the shellcode was probably written in 32 bit 2, so let's specify a bit more 32 and try to find some uh, familiar or some uh, assembly instruction which makes sense as a, uh, as a shellcode start. Uh, this doesn't make a sense for show code start here. No, 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 no. Or try to recognize something which what makes sense to you. Okay, sorry, I it doesn't make any sense because as you can see i have it here hex already and i uh, try to convert it into hex again so let's uh, delete this and now again because uh, the disassembly uh, expects uh, uh, hexadecimal uh, input so check it this doesn't make any sense so try to here is knob it looks quite interesting here but i don't know i still didn't but, uh, can't recognize anything uh, uh, commonly used but here is something here is something and you should be familiar with this you can see that this is a processing of process environment block which is uh, heavily used uh, in shellcode implementation because thanks to that uh, the shellcode can uh, part the process environment block, check the in-memory uh, uh, module list and uh, parse uh, the list and try to locate, for example, carrier 32 DLL and uh, find some uh, specific, specified um, API function. In this case, WinExec or something like that. So uh, somewhere here should be uh, the start. You can see no flop. Okay, but this doesn't make me sense as a start. This doesn't make me sense. This doesn't make me sense. This doesn't make me sense. Maybe this one, but it, it's quite strange. So first of all, try to delete this. These bytes are not uh, really uh, needed. So let's say the knob instruction was 90, 90, 90, 90, 90. You can see it here, delete this, delete. And you can see that the uh, CyberShape output is uh, immediately uh, changing. And it's really good for uh, finding some uh, the beginning of shellcode. This doesn't make any sense. This doesn't make any sense. This is a shellcode beginning. This doesn't make sense. Nope. Nope. And check it now. This does make any sense. OK. So I think this is our shellcode beginning, but as I can't be very sure about this, I could try our method. I didn't want to show it because it's really easy, but uh, this is the time I what I have to show it to you. It uh, needs the shellcode debugger. It's a very, very good tool which emulates shellcodes and it has nice feature here. I will show you. You, will, you can run the GUI or you can uh, run the uh, command line option, command line interpreter. Uh, first of all, find the xxx free C, copy that, copy that to the folder of SCD bug. 
uh, check the std back, uh, drag and drop. You can see here. And you don't know, we already think that uh, the, this is the star, the FCEA. So FC38 is here, but we are not sure about it. So here is one very, very good option, find shellcode. And this option will basically, uh, the, the shellcode debugger will try to emulate uh, all uh, offset as a beginning and try to print you the most possible uh, start of the shellcode. Uh, there are some heuristics about assembly instruction and uh, a resulting API call, which find the most, uh, uh, the the most uh, i don't know how to say it uh, the shellcode uh, beginning which is the the most uh, accurate that uh, ends in some api call and other stuff so that's all let's launch it you can see loaded 130 bytes testing 300 uh, for offsets and you can see here there are some offsets and you can immediately see that the index zero ends on windows exec which is a windows api of kernel 32 dll so let's specify select index to execute we can select the zero and what you can see that's correct you can see that uh, it will call the windows exec uh, with the argument pointing to the path of calculator get version and exit that's all running calculator uh, let's check what was the execution starts uh, file offset uh, 58 in hexadecimal so let's check it in the file go to some hex editor and check uh, 58 offset of uh, this file so here select it and you can see it's the 58 delete it and check that fc e8 and if you check the cyber share you can see that we already found the right uh, beginning of the shell code according to our knowledge of assembly instruction and that's all that's all that was all about this uh, kind of uh, attack technique uh, the uh, abusing of uh, external uh, resources and uh, resource reference and in this case it was uh, uh, the injection of uh, all the object so i hope you enjoyed it and thank you for watching